Do you struggle to perfectly blend your bracketed exposures in Photoshop? Well, you're not alone because with so many different techniques available, it's not just about knowing how, but it's about understanding when and why to use each technique for the best results. And over the last decade, I've helped thousands of photographers master exposure blending in my courses and online workshops. But in this video, I'm sharing the three essential techniques that are gonna give you stunning results for any situation. I'll guide you through each one with step-by-step -step instructions so that you can take your exposure blending to the next level. And I'll show you where you can download a free Photoshop plugin that removes all the complicated steps. But first, why isn't there just one best way to blend exposures anyway? Well, the reason is because the best way depends on the type of scene that you've captured. So think of it like this, traveling on a bicycle is faster than walking, but if you had to travel up a hundred steps, is the bike still gonna be the fastest? Probably not. So you have to match the technique to the situation. When it comes to exposure blending, using the wrong technique could actually give you worse results and waste a lot of time. So let's start with the first and easiest way to blend exposures. Now I'm not usually a fan of auto anything when it comes to editing, but this is actually perfect for the right kind of photo. So for this example, we'll use it in Lightroom, but it's available in Photoshop too. What we're gonna do is select your exposures in the film strip at the bottom of the develop window by clicking on the first one and then shift clicking on the last one in the set. From there, we can right click and then choose photo merge and then HDR from the pop-up menu. We'll check auto align, which should take care of any slight camera movement. And then also make sure that auto settings is turned off. And finally, click merge. So the result here is a new image that contains the full dynamic range of your bracketed shots all combined together into one, giving you more details in the highlights and the shadows when you move these sliders up and down. But here's the drawback with this method. When something in the scene has actually moved in between each exposure, Lightroom's just gonna to try to guess which parts of the exposure to use and it can easily get it wrong and that's gonna to lead to weird looking results. So the main takeaway from technique number one is that it works best for static scenes where the only difference between each bracketed exposure is the brightness. But if you're dealing with a dynamic scene like a seascape for example, where every wave is different, you're gonna need a different approach. And this is where technique number two comes in. So technique number two gives you more control over which parts of each exposure are gonna be blended into the final image. To use it, you have to open your bracketed exposures as layers in Photoshop, which you can do from Lightroom by selecting the images, right clicking, and then choosing edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now with each exposure as its own layer in your Photoshop document, rearrange the layers so that they go from lightest at the top to darkest at the bottom. And then add a layer mask to the top layer by clicking on the layer and then clicking this button. And what we're gonna do next is a brush into the image where we want to hide the parts of this top layer, the brightest parts, to reveal the darker layer underneath. So first, let's click on the layer mask that we just added. And then we're gonna select the brush tool with 0% hardness and 30% opacity. And then we're gonna make sure that we have black as the foreground color for the brush. And then we're just gonna brush into the image gradually to reveal the good sky from the layer underneath. And as we do that, just see how the exposures are starting to blend together, giving us the best parts from both. But again, there's a problem with what I've done here. Notice how my brush has gone over the edges of these dark cliffs. So not only is the sky coming through from the dark exposure, but also the tops of the cliffs themselves are actually becoming noticeably darker. The problem is that this is gonna stand out like a sore thumb to anyone who knows what they're looking at. So you'll wanna avoid it at all costs. Now at this point, I wouldn't blame you for asking, why not just be more careful with the brush and not go over the edges? Well, <laughs> it's a good question. The reason is that it's virtually impossible to get up to the edges and not go over them, no matter how careful you are and no matter how small a brush you're using. Even if it's just a pixel or two, people are still gonna notice. Plus, technique number three completely solves this problem anyway, so it's just easier to use that. But first, here's how this technique solves the problem of movement in between exposures where auto blend is just gonna guess which parts of each exposure to blend together. Brushing manually lets you choose which parts to blend. And because you're a human person with eyes and a brain, you can make a far better decision about what makes sense than Photoshop or Lightroom can. Okay, so how do we solve the final blending problem of brushing over these edges of things that we need to actually brush around accurately? For ultimate control, technique number three uses luminosity selections when brushing into a layer mask. Now it does sound a bit complicated if you haven't heard the term before or used it, 
but I've created a free Photoshop plugin that removes all of the complex steps. And with just a couple of clicks, you'll be able to harness this advanced blending technique without all of the manual work. Now, if you're not sure how luminosity selections work, just think of them as a stencil that you can brush through while making sure that the paint only goes where you want it to go. And the luminosity part of the name comes from the fact that the stencil is created based on what's bright and what's dark in your image, i.e. the image luminosity. Since the sky is brighter than the rest of the image, we need to select a highlights luminosity selection. Or in other words, a selection or stencil that lets us brush into the highlights while it blocks our brush from the shadows. Now to load that stencil in just a single click, click this button here on my free plugin. And then to use it, we're gonna click on the layer mask of this top bright layer. And then we're gonna brush with that same soft black brush across the sky to reveal the darker sky underneath. And now notice how it's letting me be pretty loose with the strokes. And none of what I'm brushing is actually affecting the cliffs, even though my brush is actually going over the edges. Now the best thing about using luminosity selections like this is that not only is it great for exposure blending, you can also use them throughout your entire editing process to give each edit an extra level of professional polish. And to find out exactly how easy it can be to do that, watch this next video.